Hey guys, it's Noel here. Welcome along to Tech Tuesdays at In Flight Video, where I'm going to be talking to you about all the technology that I use to record my flights, plan my flights, book them, edit them, everything, and hopefully give you guys a really um, good insight into how everything works and some of the technology that I use to help bring you these videos. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a website that I use that is called Expert Flyer, and it's a site that is essentially a travel tool. It shows you all of the um, options for booking flights, it shows you flight availability, seat maps and things like that, and all sorts of useful travel information that I find really handy when I'm uh, planning my flights. I thought today I'd give you a bit of an overview of that, how it helps me, and the sorts of tools that are available on this website. So guys, here is Expert Flyer's website. The URL is expertflyer.com. It's quite easy to remember. Uh, link to the website is in the description below the video as well. And I'm, as you can see, there's quite a few tools here. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview about all of the different um, features that are available on Expert Flyer. So as I mentioned before, guys, Expert Flyer is kind of a travel website, or well, it is a travel website, and it provides loads of information that really, um, in the past, you would have expected only to have come from travel agents and um, things like that. This gives you everything that you could possibly need to know about any flights that you're taking, the how busy the flight is, your chances of getting an upgrade on that flight, um, as well as loads of really cool travel information that um, I find helps me quite a lot. Here's all the tools that you can use down here, down the left hand side, so you have, uh, and I'll basically go through each one individually. Um, initially then the, the awards and upgrades tab is kind of one that I don't really use that often. What this actually lets you do is to find any um, chance of getting an upgrade on a flight. It basically shows you how busy the business class cabin is on a flight and whether you have any chance really of getting an upgrade on the flight that you're taking. Uh, for example, if I just put in here a flight from Heathrow to Stockholm. Uh, this is a flight I'm going to be doing um, kind of next year. Um, but I'll choose a date that's a little bit nearer to now so that we can kind of find out um, the chances. It's obviously the flight that I'm taking next year is fully empty at the moment, so it's not going to help us very much. Um, but if we go through here, we basically find um, SAS. So we're basically looking for flights from Heathrow to Stockholm. Um, we will search for business class flights and we're only looking for one seat uh, in business class. Hit search and we wait. And here we go. This is the availability results that we get for this. Um, you can see here quite a lot of information about the flights in question. This is the actual flight number that I'm going to be taking, the SK1530. Um, it's quite an early flight in the morning, so obviously leaves first thing in the morning from Heathrow. Um, gives you all sorts of information, the aircraft type, the um, frequency reliability of the flight as well. Um, and basically this, uh, the report that we've actually gone for here is to show what the chances are of getting an upgrade. So into business class, uh, which is code I, remember this because we'll be coming back to this in a couple of minutes. Uh, and it basically says, yes, there are seats available for us to, if we wanted to get an upgrade on that flight. And yeah, it's pretty much open for most of the flights that we're looking at here. Um, so that's quite a good indication really, especially if you're a frequent flyer and you are uh, eligible for upgrades and things like that. This site will actually tell you what the chances are really of getting a um, upgrade. If you can see that there's upgrade availability, you know that's a good, you've got a good chance of getting that um, upgrade. Flight availability is another great one that I use and this um, report basically um, lets you search and it tells you how many seats are available for sale on the flight that you are looking at taking. Um, a key one, I'll give you an example of when I've used this actually. So the flight that I did on the private jet, as you know, is a um, from Luxembourg to um, Dusseldorf is actually a scheduled flight that is um, sold by the airline. Um, I know that there are eight seats available on the aircraft, so in the run-up to that flight, I was looking at this every day to see how many seats were left on the flight, and sure enough, there were seven seats left every day up to when I left, which meant that clearly I was the only person on the flight. Um, most air aircraft obviously aren't as small as that, so I'll give you an example here. We'll look at some flights um, and see what sort of availability that we have on the flights that we'll take. So if we take, for example, a flight from... Um, another flight that's coming up soon. You're getting some great spoilers here on this of some up upcoming flight videos that I have. Um, Inverness to London Heathrow. And this is a flight that I'm taking in December and I will give you the date of that flight so you can all track me and be stalkerish, I don't mind. And 
here we go, 17th of December uh, on BA. And we will hit search and find out what the availability is. Now this might look a little bit kind of um, difficult to understand, a little bit awkward to get your head around, uh, or it might not, depending on if you've got experience of working with this before. Um, it's taken me a bit of practice to understand what all these codes mean here. Um, essentially what this means is, is that um, all these classes here, every single class you see here is a class of fair. J is business class, C is business class, a little bit of a different kind of flexibility um, kind of it's basically different fair classes um, within business class. I know that Y is economy and pretty much everything to the right of Y is also economy. Um, everything between J and Y is business class. And if basically if a seat here says nine on it, that means there are more than nine seats. There aren't just nine seats, there are more than nine seats available. It's a pretty empty flight this one actually. That's brilliant for me. That means that hopefully I've got really nice um, opportunities to walk around the cabin and get some good footage. Um, Let's find another flight here. Um, we will find a flight from Heathrow to Stockholm, which is another one, as I mentioned before, that's coming up soon. And if we look at that flight for a bit closer to hit to home, so let's find one in a few weeks' time. And we will try and find availability with SAS. And hit search. We'll see what we've got availability-wise on that one. And you can see here, uh, again, it's a pretty quiet day for flying by the looks of it. Um, we've got everything is open, 999s all through the board, uh, which is great. That means that their flights are, it's great for passengers. Uh, it means that the flights are pretty much um, empty throughout. So if we search for a flight tomorrow, we can probably find here that we're going to get a very different result. So if I find a flight from Glasgow to Amsterdam, for example, on KLM, it's going to be going in the next couple of days. Um, we will just change this box to say KLM rather than um, SAS. And hit search and let's have a look and see what the availability is like. And here we go, we can see straight away we've got different numbers here. This flight here, for example, the one KL1472, um, is pretty much full. You can see business class, there's only three seats available, six seats available actually, because I is also business class on KLM. So we have three, six seats in business class, um, probably one row of business class is free. Um, economy, quite a few seats free, you've got nines showing through there. There's another flight a bit later that's only running on an Embraer 190, for example, and that one is almost full. There's like three seats available in business, or six seats in business class again with the eyes, uh, and only one seat available in economy class. That is a very full flight. Quick tidbit bit of information here for you as well. If I show you the seat maps for these flights, these may not work so close to departure. Sometimes they don't, uh, and it won't work for me. Um, airport check-in only. This is something that you sometimes get when it's really close to departure, like this flight is that I'm looking at now. Not to worry, I can show you the seat uh, maps very shortly as well. Um, so the seat maps is kind of leading on from the flight availability. So you can see from the flight availability how busy your flights are likely to be. If I search for a flight to uh, this KLM flight to Amsterdam, for example, in a couple of days' time. Uh, whoops, we're not going to land at the railway station clearly. I'll make sure that I get that spelt correctly. Ah, uh, there we go. Um, and we find it for a flight that's next, um, for example, next Friday with KLM. And we will have a look at business and economy and see what the seat maps are looking like for that flight. Um, one we want KLM 1478, I think, is the flight from Glasgow to Amsterdam. I'm not that geeky that I kind of remember them off by heart, but I flew on this flight the other week so I can remember what the flight number was. Um, so here we go, you can see the business class seat map here. So there's like th three seats and one blocked in. Um, business class and um, the reason that seat's blocked actually KLM um, I believe KLM have a policy of blocking um, the seat at the side of you in fact they do actually and that's why we can only see A and C there's three seats there but B's blocked off on each uh, on those and E's blocked off on those ones and if we look at the economy cabin again we can see that yeah there's quite a few people who have selected seats this doesn't actually mean that all these seats are unsold of course these are just seats that people haven't chosen yet so the people in blue are people like me who have gone I don't want to sit in the middle at the back I want to get a decent seat by a window uh, and pre-book that seat themselves so these are all the pre-booked seats crosses obviously mean that the seats are blocked out. Um, exit rows, as you can see, KLM have blocked out the exit rows on this flight and the last three rows as well on this side as well, which you do tend to find happens quite a lot. It's quite annoying actually sometimes you could have pre-booked them and they don't block them out straight away and you end up getting bumped and not really realising. 
So that's how the sync maps kind of work on here as well. Um, we will go quickly to the flight timetables. This is information you could get, and you'll probably, one of the recurring themes um, throughout this website is that all of the information you can get is probably available through other means as well. The availability accepted. Um, seat maps you can generally get from, obviously from the airlines websites themselves. Timetables you can get from websites like ITA Matrix, um, which I'll show you in another video um, how I use that one. The good thing about Expert Flyer is everything is in one place and all you have to do, every tool that you can imagine that you need for a flight is pretty much on this website. It's brilliant. So timetables is an example of that. Um, these, um, the, the difference that you have, of course, with this compared to a lot of the other websites is these link directly into the airline's booking system, the GDS. And all of the information here comes directly from that. If the airline changes an aircraft type on a certain date, then this will be reflected first, as I will show you now. So if we go right ahead to June 2017, 17th of June to be precise, which is when I'm doing a bit of a flight to San Francisco. What I will do is search from here, so Frankfurt, which is where I'm going to be flying from, to San Francisco. It's a flight that's coming up. Uh, it's a flight I'm going to be taking on United. And it will give us basically the timetable results straight out of the GDS with all of the information, like what the aircraft type is and things like that. And here we go, wow, there's a lot of flights from Frankfurt to San Francisco that day. The one we are interested in is United 927, which is this one here, and it's operated by a 747-400. Basically the information that you will get on quite a lot of other websites, but it's quite handy to be here in one place. Um, this little button at the right hand side gives you the information about the flight. You can get to that from down the left hand side as well, which is pretty cool. Um, the flight status is, again, you can just search and find the status of a flight. It's something, again, you could get all over the internet. Um, however, it's quite handy that it is all in one place. And if you are traveling a lot, this is a website you can just hit and know that you're going to get all of the information that you need. So the flight status search here, we can see that this flight today landed on time, scheduled time, estimated time, actual time, it arrived. These are the official times from the airline, of course, as well, so it shows you if there are any. So we, you can see this is very te technical kind of language. This is information that comes straight from the airlines themselves, so it tells you all of the technical information about that flight. Um, if I go back and search for a flight that I had that was cancelled, it wouldn't let me go back in time actually, which is a bit frustrating. That will only let me go back in time a week. Um, but it can also tell you all the reasons for cancellation, which are really handy if you are disputing a flight with an airline, for example. Um, you've had a technical fault and you, and you want to know basically the official reason that the flight was cancelled. That has a bearing on whether you're entitled to get things like EU flight compensation. And... Basically, by looking on here, you can find that information out. You can find the official reason for the delay, um, which is the same information that the airlines have as well. So it's a very good source of information for you if you want to use this. Um, the Flight Details tab is another one that's very handy. Um, it kind of tells you what sort of aircraft you're going to be on, and it's going to tell you um, what the meal services are that you're going to be getting on that flight, the reliability of the flight as well. Uh, we'll jump ahead to June next year again and pick on United. Uh, we'll do 927 again over to San Francisco. And it gives you the information here. So it's a flight from Frankfurt. Terminal 1 to San Francisco International Terminal, it's on United, it's 747-400. We get dinner service, that's great. Um, in all three cabins you get dinner service, and the flight time is 11 hours 15 minutes. That's not so good, reliability is only 61%, which means that there's an average delay of 36 minutes on this flight. It's not really an issue for me because I am not connecting straight away. I'm stopping overnight for a rare change um, when I get to San Francisco, so that's okay. Uh, even if we do get a bit of a delay. Um, the seat map I've showed you already, that lets you see the, the seat map of the um, airlines themselves. And fair information is something that I really have not got my head around how that all works. It is essentially um, gobbledygook to me. I'm not a travel agent, so a lot of it I don't understand. It allows you to essentially input a fair code that you get from an airline. It tells you all the restrictions, whether you can um, change the ticket and whether or not you can fly via certain other cities and things like that. It's um, 
really very specific information about the fare that you're flying on so I don't tend to use it very often. One that I do find quite interesting to use is the travel information tab. Once again this is all information that you can probably find online, it's pretty um, like widespread information but the fact it's all here is really handy. Um, and it's also, of course, the official information, so you've got something to come back to the airlines on. You've got some kind of an idea what the official information is for different things. Uh, flight reliability ratings we will give as an example here. So we will pick on uh, my return flight from San Francisco, which is the UA901, um, from San Francisco to London Heathrow. And we can see that 71% on time. Average delay is 55 minutes. Ooh, maximum delay, 5 hours 46. I would not have once have been on that flight. Um, and basically how many times it's been late, more than 15 minutes late five times, more than 30 minutes late three times, more than 45 minutes late ten times, it's yeah, it's not a great flight is it really, um, but it, you can see it's got all that information there which is really handy if you're planning flights and you've got tight connections and things you can see straight away what your chances are of actually getting that connection. Um, TSA security line historical wait times this is if you're flying within the United States if you want to see what the queue times are uh, at security checkpoints at TSA points basically on different days we will go for JFK at say seven o'clock on a Monday morning that's probably going to be quite a busy time I would imagine and here we go so it tells you all of the delay times and the wait times for the TSA checkpoints uh, for example, here we go. So if you get if you were to get to Terminal 4B at 6 a.m., you'd have a 30-minute wait time um, on average. Uh, sorry, 20 minute on average, and the maximum wait time in the last um, presumably last few months uh, that is um, 30 minutes. So it gives you an idea of how busy it's going to be at the security checkpoints. Such a shame that this is only in the states. It would be great um, if this was throughout Europe as well, because it'd help me no end while I'm traveling on the flights through Europe as well. Uh, and a bit of airport delay notifications or well, San Francisco has got winds at the moment and is experiencing delays of around an hour. Once again, information you can get on websites like FlightAware, FlightRadar24 and things like that, but it's all kind of here, really. Minimum connection times. Now, this is a really um, useful one that I find. I travel a lot, especially when I'm doing a flight around Europe. I tend to take three or four flights in a day to maximise how many um, flights I can film for you guys. So I will literally hop from airport to airport to airport and generally have some pretty tight connections. Now, touch wood, I have made every connection so far. I've never actually missed one. I've been very close on a couple of times. Um, I've nearly missed flights in Zurich, actually. Sorry, in Geneva was the tightest I had. Zurich's another one I've had a tight connection with. Um, and this basically shows you the um, scheduled minimum connection time. Now, what minimum connection time is, is the minimum time that an air, airline will allow you to connect on one ticket. So say if I bought a ticket on Swiss and I was flying in and out of Zurich, there is a minimum time um, that they allow for connections. Anything less than that, clearly a flight lands and there's another one five minutes later you've got no chance of making it um, 20 minutes later you may have and that's why we have these uh, mcts these minimum connection types let's have a look and i'll show you what i mean so zurich incoming airline swiss outgoing airline swiss international to international for example and this will tell you basically it's again it looks very complicated it's really not it's quite simple to understand if you read what it says down here um Online basically means if you're flying with the same airline, offline is if you're flying with a different airline, uh, connecting from two, between two, two different airlines, and standard times, so DD, you can see here, domestic to domestic is 40 minutes, uh, domestic to international 40 minutes, international to domestic 40 minutes, international to international 40 minutes, 40 minutes is the standard minimum connection time at Zurich for all flights, it would seem, apart from the examples that they give you here. So it says here, if you are on um, these particular flights, um, Athens, Nice, Nuremberg, Barcelona, Berlin, um, flights like this. It is if you're connecting between these, by the way. So if you're coming in from Athens and going out to Nice, you need to allow 35 minutes. And generally, you don't get these exceptions to the rule. There's quite a few here, as you can see. I'm presuming these flights go from different sets of gates and things um, that are going to make it difficult. I mean, this one here, look, if you are going from Singapore, coming in from Singapore on Swiss and going out to Cologne, you need an hour and a half um, connection time. Um, that is quite a long connection. And some of these others are obviously 
if you're coming and you're going from coming in from Cancun and going out to anywhere at all, then you're gonna need 50 minutes. So if you come from Punta Cana, Singapore, uh, Verona, I think that one is. It actually is a little bit geeky. It, um, but it's really handy to show you what the minimum connection time is, and just out of interest as well, 40 minutes here. I wouldn't want to push it. 40 minutes is your safe time that's the time that you're guaranteed pretty much to make your connection unless you are delayed i have connected through zurich in six minutes before uh, it's a very easy airport to go through so you can see these are what the airline classes is playing it safe these are the times that i would use when i'm scheduling flights and delayed flights obviously is uh, other than another matter uh, and you're kind of at the whim of whether or not you can run fast enough at the airport essentially Maximum pin permitted mileage. This basically shows you the information about the maximum allowable mileage to get from your origin to your destination. So if you are flying London to New York, then there's going to be a maximum mileage that they will allow. Um, it's all to do with um, fares and uh, how much mileage you can claim uh, on a certain flight. Clearly, you don't want to fly between um, London and New York and connecting in Moscow, for example. The air, that might be great for an air miles perspective. Um, the airlines aren't likely to go for that. So this basically gives you the options and tells you what your maximum mileage is. Connecting cities, very similar again. It lets you, it gives you an idea of what airports you are allowed to connect through. If you're flying from London, for example, to San Francisco, we will hit search here. And you can connect if you've got a single connect point. These are all the airports you're allowed to connect at. You connect through Amsterdam, Anchorage, Athens, Atlanta, Austin, Barcelona, Berlin, Bogota, Bo Bogota, Boston, Chicago, Charlotte. Oh, I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, probably because I'm going to slip up and get something wrong and you're all going to shout at me in the comments for it. Um, so these are all the airports that you're allowed to connect through on those particular flights. Quite handy, um, quite handy if you are looking for things like that. Interline agreements, these are, um, if you search for an airline, it will show you which other airlines the that airline has agreements with um, to book you on other flights. If I'm flying on BA and my flight is cancelled, for example, they have interline agreements with all of these airlines here, American Airlines, Air Berlin, Air Canada, Air Europa, Air France. Yeah, I'll stop there because I don't know what AH is. And it essentially gives you an idea so if you have your flight cancelled and you're flying from for example chicago to london you can see there's an interline agreement straight away with american there which means that they are a good bet to go to to get your alternate flight back home to the uk um may issue tickets including so they can issue tickets on behalf of american and air berlin and all these other airlines they can check baggage to all these others it's another useful thing if you're flying on a code share for example you can see which airlines you are allowed to check baggage from and to um, if you're flying on on a ba flight number you can see that if you're connecting to an american flight for example you can connect baggage clearly straight away to american and one last screen that I'm going to show you about, which is the visa and entry requirements. It's a little bit boring. Again, it's information. It's all over the internet if you search for it, but it's here and it's handy and it's in a really official, it's all official information that you've got, basically. Let's find somewhere really off the grid and see what we need to fly into that country. We will go to North Korea, let's say. Um, and we are a resident of the United Kingdom. We want to go to North Korea. I'm not going to North Korea, by the way, just to make this very clear to everybody who might be looking for a full flight video. I'm not doing that one. Um, but you can see that you need a visa to get to North Korea. Who would have thought that? And visitors are required to hold proof of sufficient funds and you must, uh, you must hold an authorization to travel issued by a travel company in North Korea. Uh, you're going to be refused entry. If you don't, you need to have malaria jabs. Oh, it's um, quite a lot of things there, as you would expect for a place like North Korea. But... Um, clearly this is all the information that you need. It's official information as well, so if you're going to fly with an airline, this is the same sheet that they are reading from. It's really handy to see the official line on things like that, I find, at least. So, down to the nitty gritty then about Expert Flyer. Well, Expert Flyer, it's, as you would expect, is not a free website. Um, uh, it would be great if they did like a free option where you could search for basic things like seat maps and things. I pay for a very basic subscription. There's two subscriptions essentially that you can get. Um, 
there is a basic subscription which is $4.99 a month which is the one I have you can pay for a premium subscription which really doesn't have a lot of information a lot of extra things on it it does have something that I'd really like to be in the basic one which is aircraft change alerts so they will send you an email if the aircraft type that you're booked to fly on changes and I get it through other means I get alerts through another website which I'll go through um, on another time I'd love to know um, as soon as it happens basically that an aircraft has changed so I know I can book a new seat and be all sorted for video in the flights so the basic one basically it has 250 queries a month I've just gone through um, showing you all of these random queries I'm still down to 226 queries this month um, it is it's a, you get 250 basically which is more than enough even for me um, you get to do all the basic things here you get seat maps you get flight availability flight timetables all the things i've just showed you basically you don't get things like flight alerts aircraft change alerts which are the only two things are. aircraft change alerts like i say would be really handy uh, if they bump that into the basic subscription clearly they're not going to do that because it's a feature that a lot of people use here's a pricing 4.99 a month that's kind of acceptable it works out to about three pounds a month i can kind of live with that uh, for the functionality they get, I get out of this and the premium is 9.99 a month which i think is a little bit steep personally for what you get but they're clearly aiming it at a different market they're aiming it at travel agents and people like that so it's quite um, easy to understand why they would um, charge a little bit more for that but you don't get a massive amount more with the premium just the aircraft change alerts i'd really like if anybody from expert flyer is listening please um i'd love to get hold of that um I have put a link in the description of this video um, that shows you the um, that gives you a link basically to Expert Flyer and it lets you sign up for Expert Flyer and get you get a free trial. I think um, you get like two weeks free. Don't quote me on that. Um, you get a free trial essentially of Expert Flyer and then you have the option to sign up again if you want after that. Um, it's not for everybody. Not everybody needs this level of information, but as somebody that travels at least three or four times a month at the moment. Um, I can do with this information. I could do, you know, it's really helpful for me uh, to have this subscription to Expert Flyer, and it's something that I would really recommend if anybody is looking for travel agent type information for the flights that they are going to take. So, guys, just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you've enjoyed looking at Expert Flyer and everything that it can do. If you want to sign up for Expert Flyer, like I say, the link is in the description below this um, video, um, and you'll be able to have the option to sign up for it. Like say if you wanted to do that uh, thanks very much for watching today's video really appreciate it and another quick note for you if you are not already a patron of um, in flight video i'd really appreciate it if you could join us guys over there and um, we'd really like that uh, patreon as you're probably aware you've seen other videos before uh, it's a website that allows you to give a little bit back to in flight video for as little as one dollar a month um, that allows you to contribute to um, in flight video and in return um, for that you not only get to see in flight video grow um, and bring you some awesome videos hopefully but also you get early access to my videos you get to do live google hangouts with me and ask all sorts of questions and um, find out all the latest information about where i'm heading next and things like that uh, and get a real behind the scenes view to in flight video would love it if you could join me over there the link is just below here um, at the moment if you could follow us over there we'd love to have you thanks once again for watching today's video and if you wouldn't mind dropping us a comment liking and if you're not already subscribed i would love it if you could just hit that subscribe button and see all my videos when they come out thanks once again for watching and i'll speak to you soon